Hi, Charles. Welcome to If Innovation Could Talk. Hi, Ava. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Now, I'm really excited to have you because there are quite a number of areas I want to explore with you, including the fact that you mentioned when you were eight year old, you made your own lemonade and sold it with your four year old brother. And the reason <laughs> I want to mention that is because the guest before you, Mahmoud Hussein from Global Drone Solutions, he sold vegetables at the age of five. So I'm just wondering whether there's something about, you know, starting young and becoming CEOs. Yeah, look, I, I guess I probably came a little bit later to the uh, entrepreneurial cause in that case. Uh, yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I guess uh, I've always been a bit commercial and entrepreneurial. Um, uh, you know, uh, mum had a whole bunch of lemons from the lemon, from the, uh, lemon tree and I guess my brother and I thought it would be a really good idea to, to squash them and get all the soda water out of the fridge and stand on the street and sell it. I guess uh, just having that uh, having that commercial spirit is what drives most of us. In fact, I can see throughout your career there is a clear link between um, commercial, being commercial and entrepreneurial, and how you approach innovation. So you even talked about innovation um, when we had a chat earlier. You talked about innovation from your perspective being a constant process of renewal for benefit, but there's a very particular killer instinct about how you do it and how you constantly try to kill off ideas along the way. So can you please tell us a little bit more? Yeah, I guess, um, I, I guess what innovation means for me is, you know, that, that, that constant process of renewing and, and pretty much adding value. And, and so what I mean by that is, um, uh, pretty much transforming ideas into actions, whether they're in new existing businesses, uh, not for profit or government organisations, or, well, you know what? Even if you, you know, just a a person in a kitchen that's that's just experimenting with food, it may sound negative, but um, it's actually a fairly positive approach, and that's that's where I, when I have an idea or I've been given an idea and I assess whether or not it's something that I'll actually uh, continue with, I work really, really hard to kill it off. So, so I, I put all my effort into try and kill off the idea. And if I can't kill it, uh, you know, I think to myself, you know what, maybe this is a good idea. Over the course of my career, I've, I've found a number of trusted, really trusted people that have worked that process with me for, for a long time. And so then I, I go and give it a really good crack at those guys or girls and, uh, and they, they've, they've become experts at killing off my ideas. And, and funnily enough, you know what? If they can't kill it off, I implement the idea. Okay, so after all that, you know, are there any ideas that you have uh, implemented because they, su make, they survived and made the cut and then you regret it? Yeah, look, that, that's a great question. Uh, those ideas that get through that process, it's a pretty, it's a pretty arduous process. It, it takes some serious time and effort. And, and I guess, you know, I, I've been pretty well, lucky for, for want of a better word, that, that nearly everything that I've sort of implemented has sort of come across, uh, you know, come off. I don't really believe in failure in the truer sense of the word. Uh, I, I guess uh, I surprise a lot of people and they probably think I'm pretty full of myself uh, when I tell them that I've never really failed. I've just learned every possible way not to do something. So I, I guess to answer the question, no, I don't really have too many regrets. Okay, well, let's test this a little bit further. I'm particularly interested in how you apply innovation at Business News. I've always had, I'm a big fan of business news, by the way. And the reason for that is, you know, I love the fact that, you know, the news that you deliver is actually, you know, unbiased information. And I understand, you know, it's a result of your subscription based model, you know, where readers actually uh, vote with their feet or with their pockets. Um, now, even more interestingly, I understand that 83% of your readership are actually senior management who make, um, you know, information or make decisions based on trusted information that your news deliver. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, look, uh, Business News is a, uh, a media organisation that's, uh, that's been extremely innovative in the past. 
Uh, and what I mean by that is, is we turned about six years ago, we turned into a, uh, we, we were one of the first, certainly in our country, uh, and one probably one in the world that turned to a totally subscription based model. And by doing so, uh, the intention of doing that was to divorce the uh, editorial team from the commercial side of the business. So uh, for the last 200 plus years, media has generally subsidized uh, journalism by uh, getting advertisers to advertise and uh, to sell more papers or to sell more product. And uh, we, we pretty much separated the two when we went down a subscription based model. What that's allowed us to do is to pretty much invest everything that we get from a subscription side into the editorial team. And by doing so, the editorial team don't feel any need to write anything that uh, potentially is going to sell more papers or potentially just going to sell advertising. What advice would you give someone who is looking for that innovation and a career motivation? Oh, I'd say be brave. Um, I think uh, one, one of the biggest things that I see in uh, when people are talking around innovation is, is that fear piece. In my business and, and uh, in what we do, we work really hard to try and demystify what things mean for people and, and how we try and keep that really transparent, open communication. And, and by doing so, we, we almost give that driver for innovation. No idea is a bad idea. We, we work pretty hard to be able to do that. And that, that, takes, that takes some bravery. It takes bravery from, from leadership. It takes bravery from the people that are actually trying to implement innovation as well. I think ideas are contagious. I think one, crea one idea then creates more ideas. So, so yeah. That's, that's, right. that's awesome. fantastic. Um, it's wonderful because it's a great segue to um, our series in the new year, which is about courage. So we're doing um, a series about you know, the courage to be amazing, the courage to disrupt, the courage to reinvent. Um, so thank you for, without even prompting, you know, mentioning that being brave and courageous is important. And most of all, thank you so much for your time. It has been such a pleasure having you as a guest on If Innovation Could Talk Tales. Thanks a lot, Eva. Love what you're doing. Thank you.